Hello, fellow traders, tis I, the rumpled one. I want to walk you through the development, my thought processes, of how I discovered, processed, the daily wick zone trade. People ask me all the time or make comments saying that I'm always changing methods and writing a bunch of indicators, but that's not really here nor there. Fact of the matter is, is that I spend a lot of time staring at charts, and every now and then I think I see something, and so I figure it out to find out if what I see is really what I see. Because sometimes you look at something, but you don't really see what's there. So the first thing I noticed was that it seemed like the candles were always bigger than the wicks which seems to be obvious but it also seemed like there was money to be made there so the first thing I did was I wrote a frequency distribution for the range where range is the high minus low in pips and you can see here for the euro yen the range is usually a hundred pips or more 55 percent of the time so that's better than a coin toss so moving on, we now have to look at the wick, which would be the high minus the top of the candle for the upper wick or the bottom of the candle minus the low for the lower wick. And here you can, use, you can see that wicks are usually 50 pips or less most of the time. So those two facts should tell you something that the range of the candle can't fit inside the wick therefore there might be something there that we can take advantage of we can exploit for profit so the next step was to look at how many times price actually stayed within the upper wick area and how many times price stayed within the lower pip area and so we can see right here price stayed in the between the high and the top about 11 percent of the time in other words it closed there and between the bottom and the low was 13 percent of the time and I'm running these free frequency distributions over a thousand daily bars so that's about four years worth of data so this isn't any curve fitting or just picking these numbers cherry picking numbers and we can see that the close close outside of the wicks 75 percent at a time so once again the candle body won't fit in the wick because it's usually a hundred and the wicks only about 50 and it says that about 75 percent of the time or three out of four times that the price is going to close outside of those zones but that still wasn't good enough for me I said we got to take it one step further we need to know how many times price actually went into the zone and either exited through the zone or went back in and reversed so once again over a thousand bars you can see that price went through the top zone 47 percent at a time in and out of the top zone 26 percent at a time in and out of the bottom zone 29 percent at a time and through the bottom zone 44 percent at a time and it wound up in no zone only 12 percent of the time no zone would be the area between the top zone and the bottom zone or the upper wick zone and the lower wick zone once again using a thousand bars no cherry picking and if you add these up it's going to be greater than a hundred but you can see in this particular diagram price went in and out of the upper wick zone and then through the bottom wick zone so you would have two counts here that's why they don't add up to a hundred so that being said it seems like we can exploit this for profit on an ongoing basis 
So what I did was I wrote some more indicators. One, a multi pairs display that tells me where price is relative to the zones because for this trade, you want to get in the trade either exiting long at the top of a zone or exiting short at the bottom of the zone. So in this case, you wouldn't go long here. You'd wait for price to get in the zone and then you would go short. And you see here, had you taken this trade today, you'd be up quite a number of pips. In fact, in the previous high minus the close, from here to here, you see it's 100 pips. But our trade would have been here at 141.62. And the current price is 140.90. So once again, that would have been a profitable trade. And this this will just show you here, I can change the chart period. The indicator, since it's daily, stays the same. Now, the shaded area, this is today. The dashed lines, that's yesterday. So you can see when yesterday's high and yesterday's low was put in, and you can see the price action today. And once again, as I always say, price is the same on all charts so we can even go down to a one minute chart you can see here it's below we can move up to a five minute 15 minute we can look at the hour chart but it doesn't matter because price is the same and that's the important thing I also wrote a history so you can see where a price closed because some people need to see it pictorially. Some people can use numbers. Now, I also wrote a GPS so we can see just how far a price moved from the different lines. So from the previous high, 96 pips. From the previous close, which would be here, because since yesterday's candle was green the shades are green we can see close minus the previous close 71 pips to the good right now close minus previous open 48 close minus previous low 17 so even if you came in late to the game you could still be up pips by taking this trade here because some people don't wake up until the New York Open, so this is all the action in the previous sessions. But once again, it's still a valid trade. This also tells you the top zone size 26 pips, bottom zone size 29 pips. And finally, we can put it all together on one chart. You can choose, doesn't matter which time frame, you can, if you, if you want to look at the daily, you can look at the daily. The lines will still be there. If you like to trade off the 15-minute chart, then you can use the 15-minute chart. It doesn't matter. Price is the same. So we can put all these indicators together. And these are just displays. The trade is simple. You always want to trade going out or leaving the zone. No exceptions to the rule. So in here, you'd want to go short or long. Once again, there's your short. You can see the price action here. There was a short. And of course, to me, it's obvious to the user. But if you're entering short at 141.62, then what you would do is you would put your stop loss at 141.88 or maybe 141.89, just one pip or two outside that zone. Because if price exits the zone, that means you should be going long. So you want to get out of the trade there. And you adjust your position size according to the zone size. And of course, if we find a pair that happens to be in the zone, let's find one. Uh, let's see, we've got the pound yen inside the low zone. So if we switch this chart over to the pound yen, Oops, I think I did the wrong chart. 
Let's switch it over to the pound yen here. And you can see you get a display coming up. And what that display gives you is the parameters for your trade. So let's say you have a thousand dollar account. It'll tell you your lot size. It'll tell you and you can tell it what the risk as an input. It'll use your actual account size from MT4. So it gives you here's your risk. You're risking twenty dollars. This is your lot size. So if you're going to take one of these zone trades and for this particular pair that's your lot size because we're going to take the zone size as your stop loss because you should be entering short here or long here. Now in this particular case there wasn't much of a zone only four pips between here but you can see taking these trades at the zone would have been profitable and you wouldn't have been stopped out had you gone if you had gone long here you wouldn't have been stopped out in fact you could have taken a profit and had you gone short here you could have taken a profit had you gone short here you wouldn't have been stopped out now of course that's just an anomaly for today it doesn't always happen that way let's see do we have anything else inside a zone yes we have the Australian yen inside the zone let's take take a look at one other pair because once again I don't want you to think I'm cherry picking so here in this case you could have gone long see this was coming down so if you would have went long here it looks like you could have made some pips and then had you gone short here it looks like you could have made some pips once again you're only trading outside when price exit the zone it's that simple and as always trade what you see and if you have any questions feel free to ask uh, these indicators are a part of the donational series and it doesn't matter what you trade it's how you trade it